Hey there, welcome to Design Uncut at Cavis Virtual 2021. I'm Veronica Miller, CEO of Medanus Media, and my place in this world is on the media side of kitchen, bath, and interior design. And as co-host of Design Uncut, it's my mission to help design pros get a deeper understanding of the technical side of design. This includes, of course, Smart Home, and that's why we're here today in the Cavis Connected Living Pavilion. So welcome, everybody. And I'm Katie McGregor Bennett, CEO of KMB Communications and co-host next to Veronica Miller of Design Uncut. I'm thoroughly entrenched in the AV world, residential and commercial technology. And my mission is to help bridge the conversation between tech integration pros and design pros. I'm also here to connect brands to designers, specificators, integrators, and buyers. Thanks for joining us today. It's going to be a great session. And you do a very good job at that, Katie, I have to tell you. So, and it's good to be at Cavus Virtual, right? Our world is virtual anyway, so it's cool. Yes. And you know, it's it's funny because you know, I, I stalked you for two years at, at the at the real live in person cave is and, and now the one year that we're gonna hang together is the year that we're just doing it virtually. Weird. That's because I couldn't escape you. And and so so I think this <laughs> it works. You can run. This is great. We get so much more done, right? So I don't mind virtual. I'm an introvert, so I'm all I'm all good. But uh, the guys we're talking today are sitting out in sunny California, and I'm a little bit miffed about that. And they are literally sitting outside in some cases, and which is a perfectly appropriate because we're talking about taking life outdoors. And now more than ever, as you might imagine, homeowners want, and in some cases even need to extend their usable square footage by adding fun and functional outdoor environments that provide a place to work, learn, cook, entertain, relax, or just have more space to get away from each other. You know what I mean, right? In this session today, we'll hear from tech integration pro Alan Tremble of Acoustic Evolution and CEO uh, of Screen Innovations, Ryan Gustafson. Hello, guys. Hello, how you doing? Hello. Good, good to see you guys. So let's get you guys started with a quick intro about your work. Uh, let's start with Alan. Hi there. Uh, I own uh, Acoustic Evolution. We are an integrator, technology integrator in San Diego area. Um, been doing this for 20 years. And in this case, we're going to go outside and uh, we're going to show you what uh, we do here where the weather is always 72 and sunny. I don't even want to talk about it. You know what's interesting? I mean, we all know that that's kind of a screen behind you, but somehow there's actually light right on top of your head. So I don't know what it is you're doing, but you really look like you're sunbathing right now. And I'm sitting here in two feet of snow. So, yeah. That's a San Diego event. That, you know, yeah. it's, when, you, when you live in San Diego, there's just always this gorgeous sun that just... Uh you know. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, you know, we have cool stuff too. Ryan. Not in California, in Austin. Yeah. I, I, Ryan Gustafson, CEO of Screen Innovations. And my first word was outside. <laughs> and that's the truth. <laughs> um, we actually uh, manufacture both projection screens and uh, roller shades. Um, and uh, we've been equally focused on indoor versus outdoor, uh, mostly because we just think outdoor is fun, and uh, there hadn't been a whole lot of innovation there, and we really look to bring more spice to the outdoor environment and allow people to really expand upon their investments. Awesome, that's awesome, Ryan. And, and it is funny, I remember you telling the story about outside being your first word, and th the first time you told me that many years ago, I kind of laughed, I'm like, yeah, right, but no, it was, and and true to form, everything you do is dedicated to the outdoors. We'll talk about that connection here in a little bit, but um, I just want to thank you guys so much for joining us today and for sharing your insights. Uh, before we dive in, uh, let's see, oh, just bear with that. Cool. But anyways, uh, this, I was reading an article this morning by um, Fernando Wong. Actually, it was an Arc Digest article that was focused on Fernando Wong, and he's been called one of the most influential designers in America by El Decor. Fascinating guy, beautiful work. He was quoted there saying, we're getting requests for covered outdoor living areas that have all of the comforts of inside of the, on the outside. People want family spaces with everything from big screen TVs to pizza ovens to billiard tables. They want their homes to look like and have the amenities of the resorts they used to travel to enjoy. And I think that sort of perfectly sets up the, uh, the, the tone for today's conversation. So with, with that in mind, let's, uh, let's dive in. Alan, 
kick us off here, if you would tell us about the this this fabulous project of which we're seeing a little bit of a glimpse behind you. I know that that also is work in progress, but um, tell us kind of give us a setup, and then uh, and then we'll flip over to to the deck, and and you can take us through the take us through the wow and the how. All right. So this is a project we've been on for a couple of years, um, and it was recently sold to a new owner there who wanted to put his. Uh, his mark on it and change things up a little bit to make it a little bit more outdoor friendly for his, uh, for his family uh, and to build some uh, cozy outdoor areas where he can, he can hang out and uh, enjoy some sports on TV and, and watch his kids run around. So I, I just got to interrupt you right away. So what we're looking at right now is the before because it wasn't outdoorsy enough. Correct. I just want to, okay. Yeah, so okay. Thank you. This, <laughs> this is lacking. This is a, a shot of the, of the house that uh, when it was up for sale, uh, I worked with the previous owner in building a, a big AV system inside it and a, and a huge audio system all around that yard. Um, but uh, it was then sold to another guy who uh, just wanted to bring more of the outdoor or the more of the indoors outside. So you see a big patio over there uh, just over the pool. Um, and you know, in, in doing so he, right. He wanted more covered spaces that he can hang out and uh, get out of the sun, right. It is Southern California. It does get a little hot occasionally. So, uh, we are now putting a couple of, uh, covered cabanas in the yard. So early on the, uh, the homeowner introduced me to the architect and talked to me about what he wanted to do in his plan. Uh, so before any of the tractors showed up, I met with the architect and we've come up with a couple of spaces to put these outdoor cabanas in. And of course, in an outdoor cabana, you got to have a TV in there. You got to have speakers in there. You got to have a bar in there to uh, keep yourself hydrated. So <laughs> that's uh, one of the locations there that overlooks what's now become, uh, you saw that tennis court there just a few minutes ago. That tennis court's now a uh, sand volleyball court. So that'll be, when that cabana goes up, that'll be a main um, viewing point for the volleyball court. Um, motorized TV that'll come out of the ground. Uh, we see uh, curtains there. Uh, those curtains are actually going to become roller shades so he can screen himself off from the sun and or open it up um, to have 360 degrees of, of view there. So uh, hit, hit the next slide there. Just quickly, as as you guys are listening in and watching, we'll come back to these cabanas and Ellen and Ryan will then talk about how they converted from the fabric drapes to over to the, the motorized roller shades. So stand by mm -hmm. for, for that. Yeah. Okay. So here we are, uh, first stage of construction. Grass is gone, the fire pit's gone. Um, and we're here uh, marking out where we can and how we're gonna run pipe and wire to get wire to where we need to, to be. Um, I think you can see a little bit of sand in the background there where that tennis court was. So uh, early stages here, we're just uh, getting things moving along. There's the pad for one of the cabanas. Um, and that wall is gonna come out there so you can easily walk out of the cabana and then right into a new grass area that's right in front of the cabana. This cabana here is gonna go right against the wall. Um, and this was the one that'll get done first. Uh, you see some, some furniture in there and there's now plans for uh, a bar on the left side. Well, we've got an 85 inch uh, outdoor TV that's gonna motorize down out of the ceiling there um, and that that uh, that'll then offer him view of the pool and um, and the whatever games on TV or whatever he wants to watch. But his his key thing was to get uh, technology out of the way when it wasn't in use and hidden, and then when he wants to use it, then it all comes up or out of the ceiling, and he can watch uh, his his shows and watch his kids play around in the pool there. 
So, and what you were saying earlier is that he would have a 360 on some of these, maybe not this one, but the other cabana. So Correct. all four sides can disappear and then the TV is just in the ceiling. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. So this one, I don't know if you could see the kind of sketch of the house in the background. Yeah. So this is up against the house, uh, looking Southeast, uh, over the pool. So he'll have about 180 degree view here. Uh, but in the other one, uh, right, he'll be, be able to spin around and see everything. How big are these uh, cabanas, roughly? Uh, these are 16 by 16. Okay. Okay. 16 Is there a size limit to kind of think about when you run into, and that might be a Ryan question, uh, when you think about uh, uh, shading and, and all of that, what can run? What I'm sure there's what? a limit, but uh, I'm sure Ryan can get around that by putting two of them together or, or – uh, you know, coming up with something creative, but, you know, we've done motorized shades in excess of 20 feet. So okay. uh, that's a it's yeah, typically 23 feet and under is pretty standard. Um, okay. And uh, steel construction can go over that. And we've had more challenges with that recently than uh, before um, where it just gets uh, so wide with a without any uh, infrastructure. Um, but it's been extremely popular, pretty much 23 feet and under um, openings thus far. Okay, that's helpful, thank you. So there's another shot of the yard itself. Um, I don't know, over on the left, right behind one of the lights uh, stanchions there, you can see some scaffolding against the wall. Uh, that's where one of the camera uh, cabanas is going. Uh, the other cabana is just to the left off the screen and it'll open up into this grass area and into that sand volleyball court there. And then underneath, uh, there's a huge patio there um, with a fireplace. And then there's a uh, another 85-inch TV hanging over that fireplace and a bunch of speakers under there. That's where they... In the space uh, that we're looking at right now, kind of dead ahead? Right, straight ahead, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's the main entrance into the, into the game house there. So that's where they currently well, that hang out. Will that TV also be on a motoriz motorized mount, Alan, as well, or something? No, that one's just uh, flat against the uh, flat against the fireplace. Okay. okay. So. Hey, this is familiar. So that's the view of the, you know, when you're sunbathing on the pool deck. That's your view uh, out to mm -hmm. the south. So we get yeah. a cabana to the just to the right off the screen, and a cabana just to the left off the screen. So didn't want to get the cabanas in the way of the views. So. And now what all Alan, uh, you know, when, I mean, you're acoustic innovations, but clearly you're doing so much more than that. What all is your job in, in this project? Uh, so I was, the homeowner talked to me about doing a, a plan of what he wanted to do, uh, as far as viewing and listening to music, uh, being able to, to work out there or have plenty of Wi-Fi so we can then control the sound system. And since I have a, our, my company has a working knowledge of the house, uh, since we were there before it sold to this homeowner, um, we know how to get around the house and where utilities or we, where we can tie into utilities. So the, as soon as the architect was brought on board, uh, they brought us in for uh, some an advisory capacity, I'll say at this point, um, just to make sure all the plan went to what uh, went to or turned into what the homeowner was looking for. And then once we had a, a basic plan, then we brought in the the contractor, and uh, now the contractor's on board and actually doing the the physical work there that you see. Okay, including that that seven hundred pound lift you were talking about earlier. Well, so. That'll be my guys putting that up in the up in the air, and uh, we're all looking forward to, to that. <laughs> That's, you say we like you. So you gotta you gotta, gotta explain that, and I know we don't have visuals on that. Right, but but the lift for the TV alone is seven hundred fifty pounds. Is that right? Well, in packaging too, so it's okay. you know it's in the high sixes, but still that's a that's a that's a heavy lift to be holding up over your head and bolting into right. the structure. So. With that in mind, they had a structural engineer bring uh, do some calcs on this on the framework of this uh, cabana. So they had to gauge up in the uh, it's it's a metal structure um, and a metal roof 
but they had to gauge up uh, and in the beam size to to handle this load. So and they got something yeah. heavier than our shades. <laughs> yeah, quite a bit heavier. <laughs> I feel better More now. More substantial. <laughs> Heavier sounds so negative. Oh. <laughs> well, let's, let's talk about that just just a little bit more from the from the design perspective. And Veronica, you pick me up here on as I fumble through the through the stage here. But it, there there's a lot going on. So it, as a homeowner, I would like a large you know 85 inch TV out in my cabana, and I'd like it to be there when I want it, and I don't want to see it when I don't. Cool. That seems like a simple request, but the complexities of so you've just outlined them are are. Sizable, not not such that can't be overcome, but there is definitely a process there. If you would just kind of touch on the uh, for the design community and those watching here today, what are some of the considerations when they hear this conversation unfolding with a large size TV that wants to be uh, seen when when seen and not when not? Um, what what should they listen for and what should they be asking next? Well, sure. Um, besides the utility tie-in, right? So. First of all, you got to get electricity to the to the TV and the lift. We got to have signal there so the TV displays something. But then there's the physical part of it, right? You've got, you know, together with the TV that's over 120 pounds, um, you know, you've got about 750, 800 pounds up in the air, um, and so uh, the in, the architect brought in a structural engineer. Um, and myself and working with the structural engineer as to how this thing mounts up there, uh, what are its mounting points when it's down, you know, is there going to be kind of, is there going to be a wind load on this thing, uh, when it's up, you know, are we, what it, are we going to hit anything when it's moving up and down? Um, so all that had to be taken in, into account. So, um, you know, it's fairly straightforward, but. You know, that's something you got to think about and how how all this is going to fit together and 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 get installed. So, you know, the last thing you want to run into is a fitment issue when you've got that much weight over your head. So, so I've got two questions in terms of materials to kind of think about or products to think about. One, uh, the, the TV screens themselves, are they specific to the outdoors or does any TV do? How does that work? Well, these are specific to the outdoor. Uh, so since we're outside and he plans on using them in the, in the sun, um, now it's covered, but uh, the outdoor TVs are not only sealed for, for weather, but they're much brighter than a typical TV. So okay. we wanted to, to have a, a, the brightest picture we could uh, if he's out there watching in the sun. So, okay. uh, so yeah, in this case, uh, they're both outdoor TVs. So and they're outdoor TV. And, and what about the, the sound? How, see, every time I think outdoor sound, the first thing that comes to my mind is those rocks with the speaker inside them. So it's, sure. it's got to be better than that. Um, but but what, what do you do and how do you integrate that um, into, and how, you know, I mean, if that thing is open 360, surely that impacts sound quality too, right? Sure. So we've got a number of zones out there, right? So we're using... Savant to control the system from, uh, you know, he could use his phone or a tablet. Uh, and we've got a number of zones. So we can turn on different areas of the, of the yard. Uh, we have speakers up in the ceiling with the TV. So if you're just watching TV, the sound's going to come from the, the direction that you know, you're looking at the TV, right? If you got other people in the yard, then we can start turning on different zones of the, of the yard or the whole yard itself. And so what we're using is a number of uh, Sonance's uh, SLS 70-volt uh, system. So, I don't know, you saw the size of the yard, uh, but there's 76 uh, subwoofers and other little yard speakers all over that place out there. So That might do could, the trick. Yeah, we, <laughs> we can turn that into a, a, a nightclub if you wanted to. <laughs> but at the same time and, and and at the same time with that many speakers and subwoofers and that many zones alan um you that also allows you to dial in how how audible each of those individual zones oh. is right so theoretically you're not blasting out the neighbors if you've got all of those firing because you've got it dialed in in such a way that it's it's getting to the perimeter but not much beyond sure. right? right so they're all pointed in but you know wherever you walk on the property you can hear uh 
hear the music right where we don't have to crank it to hear it on the other side of the uh, other side of the yard um, we can keep it at a soft volume to keep the the neighbors at bay and right, you and you enjoy the music as as intended wherever you walk around now with that much power and that many speakers uh, if you wanted to get on the uh, on the gas there, you can you, you, you can entertain the neighbors as well. But you can make it shake. It's another one of those California earthquakes. Now I know what causes them. <laughs> it's everybody right. that That's lives right. in those hills having a swell. Oh, time. Ow. Jeez. So. <laughs> Don't, don't scare the people. That's, that's not where earthquakes come from. <laughs> oh, oh, no, no, that's no. not. Okay, okay. Never no. mind. I'm not scaring people. I'm just exploring opportunities. Alan, that, this, this is incredible. And I really would love to invite you back to Design Uncut uh, at a later date when you're ready. Sure. You just said earlier to me that, that, that it'll be done April, May. So well, that's, that's the target. That's the target. So. That looks that looks incredibly daunting when I when I think of you know all the sand we just saw, but uh, that would be that would be great. So we'd love to we'd love to see the final project if we can, if that's permitted, sure. and we definitely want to do a follow up. But we've got, I mean, I, I think it's so important to think about um, outdoor in a completely new way. So uh, thinking, you know, getting some of the ideas from uh, resort living and bringing that not just into multi-million dollar homes but into into homes in general with the way we are currently living and will be for some time I would imagine you know certainly looking at the pool the sand volleyball court I don't know that I would have swapped the tennis court for the for the volleyball but fine you know hey can't can't win them all yeah. um and then the cabanas, and then there's a wine cellar, Katie assures me, and, and Katie has a bit of a, of a wine thing, and there's not just one, but there's two wine cellars. Did, did, were you involved on that as well on the inside? Well, that's still in the planning stage, but uh, I will be pulled in as soon as the uh, concept is, it, is developed. Um, yeah, that'll be project number two, and then there's more coming after that, so. We're, Katie and I are here to consult on the wine part. Oh, sure. sure. We're yeah, very we good at that. To, make sure that. We're a phone call away. Just <laughs> really don't, don't worry about it. So you just, you just teed up uh, Ryan's piece of this conversation and uh, moving away from those uh, textile draperies on the, that we saw on the pavilions and screen innovations makes outdoor motorized and manual shades as well as projection screens uh, that can be installed outdoors or even better taken from the indoors out as needed, which is really cool. So uh, Ryan, if you don't mind walking us through some of the products uh, and share considerations along the way that designers should think about. Yeah, I'll tell you, we love this trend. Um, we're in the business of having fun. And uh, at the end of the day, Really, what Alan and, uh, and we sell is bringing family and friends together. And it's, it's all the different products we do and all the different services that Alan does and everything he puts into these jobs uh, at the end of the day brings friends and family together. And, you know, in this current environment where uh, people have had a lifestyle change or they're not going on vacations, I think even that much more. And they're really thinking differently about what they're doing and where they're investing their money. So we've seen a lot of change uh, taking the experience that we sell by putting all this together and taking it to the outside. And uh, if you want to flip to the next slide there, we've got a few uh, different illustrations of that. <clears throat> in the past, um, some people knew about being able to close in their outdoor spaces and eliminating bugs and keeping the heat and cold in uh, during the winter or even summer, keeping the AC in. Um, it's kind of funny that as soon as we got into the outdoor shade business, I discovered that like 90% or more of my friends had no idea what I was talking about. And the best part is everyone that saw it wanted it. And the fact that you can actually, for a very low price, increase your usable square footage and bring more of the toys and the services that Alan even provide outside is truly awesome. And you've got a lot of people that are either moving right now, or you've got uh, people that are in a current home and actually want to expand their space. Or I, I think what people are looking for right now is a transformation of what they have. They want something new. They're, they're not getting to go on these vacations and travel. And 
the fact that what we can do in this industry from a technology standpoint can give that to people at a very reasonable price, I think is truly awesome. We definitely feel like it's a gift right now uh, to be able to offer so much value uh, to people. So this is an example of my buddy's house down the street where he put some shades in uh, completely enclosed. He had mosquitoes at night, now he doesn't. He also has heaters in the ceiling that didn't hold the heat in. Now they do hold the heat in. In fact, they hold in 90% of the heat while still giving 10% view through of the lake. So really cool, the flexibility. Uh, go to the next slide real quick. <clears throat> this is actually my house and I had the same issue. I had tons of mosquitoes. Um, I use my outdoor space. In fact, I like to actually open the doors and leave the whole house open. Again, my first word was outside. I hate going inside. I, you can ask Katie, I never like to go inside. So the fact that I could actually leave my doors open and not have my wife yell at me about all the flies that came inside, uh, that was a game changer for me. Um, we are near where water is. And so we got flies and the second it warms up, you got mosquitoes and everything like that. So it's not even a large space, but the fact that I can open the whole house up to the outside now and not have to worry about the things that I always worried about was a total game changer and especially a game changer from an entertainment perspective. Um, off to the left there is actually a solo screen. Um, like Alan, we're seeing lots of people wanting to do uh, the TVs and the games. Once again, bring the family and the friends together from an experience standpoint outside. And so we actually invented a screen that runs on lithium uh, that only has to be recharged like every couple of years. And it works with the latest uh, ultra short throw projectors and it's ambient light rejecting. So it even works in full with full sunlight. Uh, or even full sunlight with the shade down, and you can pretty much mount it anywhere. Um, like Alan's situation, we're seeing a lot where people want the TV there when they want it, but when they don't want it, they want it to disappear. And Solo is rollable and disappears into two and three quarter inch cassette that can be custom powder coated to match your house uh, or uh, make a statement, do your favorite sports color. But nonetheless, it can be there when you want it and not when you don't. And stay on that Any questions actually. along those lines so far? I, I definitely have a question around uh, the heat containment. Whoops. Yeah, go ahead. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. You were saying it's keeping heat in as well. Is that is how how do I have to understand that? Yeah, so here's the beauty of outdoor shades that I love so much. And I, I think even a lot of people that currently own them don't realize this. If you are 10% open, which is exactly what you're looking at in the current image, that means you can see 10% through the screen. When you do a dark char brown or a black screen, you don't notice the screen at all. It's just like your screen in your window. You actually see right through it. But the beautiful thing is 90% of that material is closed. Therefore, even though I can see through it as if it was like 50% open, I'm actually getting the benefit of the, ther the thermal benefit of only having 10% open. So that fire pit that you're looking at right there actually heats a, a 2,000 square foot area with no problem at all. And if you do a big ass fan or a, a couple of really good fans, they also circulate the air and even help more with a single fire basically being able to heat a very large environment or heaters in the ceiling able to uh, heat a large environment with no problem at all. So opening your house up in the dead of winter, uh, it, it enables that and allows you to feel like you're outside. So I have much more flexibility doing this than have, for instance, having a glass enclosure like I would in a solarium type setup. Absolutely, and you can roll it up when you don't want it. Uh, the biggest problem that I, I see a lot of people that do uh, like glass rooms and such or a greenhouse type environment is when the sun does come out and it gets hot, it gets really hot really quick. You and the first thing yeah. they want to do is open it up. So the fact that we can open it up with the click of a button or your voice uh, or soon uh, the bot, your body will be able to measure your body and know exactly who you are. And if you want them up, it'll automatically roll them up. Uh, that flexibility really makes the environment transformative. 
And there's a lot of times when you want them up and a lot of times when you want them down. And, you know, I'll tell you, the second the mosquitoes come out, you're going to want to drop them immediately. <laughs> so being able to do that quickly and efficiently, I think, is beautiful. And I will note, too, heat isn't the only thing. In the summer, uh, when it's 103 degrees here in Austin, it's wonderful in the afternoon to drop those and actually just open the doors and let it AC the outside while you're watching the news. Let it AC the outside. I'm just gonna put that out there in in big letters. That's that's pretty amazing. How's it handle, <laughs> how's it work with pets? Is it is it risky with with dog paws or things like that? Or is it pretty you know, the material solid? quite? It's made the material is actually made to go up to like 100 mile an hour winds. Um, okay. But you typically will do an anemometer or something, so they'll automatically roll up in that type of environment. Um, and there's actually springs. Uh, in the side channels, and uh, we look to actually improve this technology in the future uh, to double uh, the benefit of having a spring for wind load uh, and for ease of installation. Uh, and or to your point, uh, I've seen a couple of my friends that have brought over their big dogs, uh, not invited by the way, uh, but <laughs> they've run into the screen full speed, and the screen is designed to where it can either pull out without tearing out. Uh, and, and automatically heal by rolling up or down for that type of scenario. I've also seen the same type of thing with, uh, with young children uh, as well that may run into it, you know, or hit it with something. Um, overall, they're pretty robust, um, and we take a lot of that into consideration uh, for, uh, uh, in the design. Parts are also our safety mechanisms in place there too, Ryan. So if a child or an animal were to be underneath it as it was lowering, it would stop much like a garage door, correct? You are correct. Uh, we actually have added that to our motors last year where if it's rolling down or up, similar uh, to what Alan dealt with on the TV, uh, it'll actually automatically correct and roll back up a chair. This happens a lot in the wind where it could blow a chair up underneath it. And if it comes down on one side versus the other, it could actually jam it up. And if you're not at home and it's running in automation, there could be a problem there. So we've thought about most of these things uh, to try to help uh, the overall longevity of the product. All right, cool. One last thing I definitely want to mention before we get out of shades, the dust. Uh, mm -hmm. These cabanas and amazing things that people are doing outside what I found so often that drove me nuts, we have a lot of pollen here in Austin, and uh, a lot of people do just depending on where you're at, but I'll tell you what, if you walk outside to your amazing outdoor environment with all your awesome technology, and every single time you walk out there, it's covered in dust and dirt, and you have to spend 30 minutes wiping it down, it's really a deterrent. And what I found is I leave my shades down all the time. Luckily, I'm not in a really high wind area where like I was before, but I leave them down all the time and it actually keeps all the pollen and the dirt and dust out. So every time I go out on the back porch, I'm not wiping everything down or feeling like everything's dirty all the time. And this ties in with a lot of electronics. It ties in with projection screens and ultra short throw projectors, regular projectors, televisions. There's a lot of equipment we have out there that actually has fans to keep it cool, whether it be audio or video. And you don't want all that full of all that pollen and dust all the time. I would probably say that the dust has been probably knocked down to less than 1% of what I had before I put the shades in. And I think that's a huge boon to an outdoor area that you want as a living area where you live uh, and you want to use on a regular basis. And a lot of these homes that Alan's doing, these real high-end homes, people aren't there all the time. So if they do travel and they're you know switching between four or five homes, I think the fact that you've got a peace of mind when you get back and everything's not completely coated in dirt is pretty cool. Very cool. What's, uh, before we go into some of the details of the products, what you, you said, you know, there, it's, it's a relatively affordable solution. What are we talking about for something like what the, not counting the actual structural addition to your own home, but the screening itself? Yeah. So if I wanted to actually build in uh, my outdoor area, I probably would have spent seventeen to $20,000, somewhere in that range. Uh, if I wanted to close it in with shades and have a transformative indoor outdoor living space, you could do that anywhere from like four to five thousand dollars wow. for like okay. two thousand square feet. So I what I found compared to well, <laughs> pre-COVID, what I found compared to construction was probably about a quarter of the cost or less. 
Uh, I'll tell you what, right now, trying to get any type of uh, work done is just crazy, uh, both in California, Austin, and, and many other places. So we might be uh, all the way to like a fifth or a sixth or less of the price uh, for doing shades. Um, and that's something that we can turn, you know, more in a, a four week uh, time frame versus a half a year. So yeah. I think it is a great option for people uh, to be able to expand upon existing living conditions or make their uh, their new home that they're building have more square footage uh, very affordably and quickly. Cool. Really interesting. Awesome. Thank you. So what do we yeah, look at? You can track then? a couple sl slides ahead to solo if you would like, or to out outdoor screens. Yeah, I don't know if you guys have experienced motorized shades, but totally changes the effect of uh, of a patio for the good. Yeah. I love the idea yeah. of me just walking out there and it recognizing me and doing what I needed to do. I, I want my whole world to work like that, but so far that hasn't happened. But uh, yeah, is that is that a savant piece or is that that part of the what the 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 actual brain of the operation needs to do or is that specific to your product? Alan, are you playing with any of that stuff yet? Yeah, yeah, we uh, okay, cool. I we put in a number of your shades, including outdoor ones. So, yeah, no, it's it, Ryan puts in the motorization and the interface, and then we take, you know, Savant. In our case, uh, we integrated with Savant, and and we control it both via the clock and or a button press. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. So the future uh, also will be just basically scanning uh, your body um, and basically by volume, we'll know who you are. So imagine you've got, you know, five people in the family and you can basically scan them all. This is actually common practice in commercial now over POE. And uh, it's becoming extremely popular in office environments. So we're looking at all these types of add-ons just to make the experience simpler. Um, I'm kind of one of those people that when I walk into a room, uh, I don't even touch wall switches anymore. I do use Alexa myself currently, but um, I just, I like the simplest way to actually make something happen. So in Katie's case, we would pour a glass of wine the second she walks into any room of her home. Yeah, I can see yeah. that. <laughs> and, and we don't know each other yet, Ryan, but I'm, I'm right there with Katie. I think that would be good. And it would be good just for my ego. I mean, I think it really elevates you, doesn't it? Yeah. Red, or, red or white, depending on the astronomical clock, we'll know exactly who she is and we'll, we'll pour the wine. Done. <laughs> yes, yes. And sometimes but, during the year, it's also pink. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, one of those benefits yeah, you were so, talking about, Ryan, is that uh, keeping the uh, patio clean. Right? I didn't, yeah. That, that's, Major. That, that's a big deal for me and something I didn't even really think about. But now that you say it, um, makes makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I mean, we've all gone to use an outdoor space or I even went to have dinner last night outside uh, with my wife uh, and uh, went out on the outside patio and the table was covered in like what felt to be like an inch thick of pollen. And, you know, it just kind of ruins the moment. <laughs> So, yeah, it's a huge benefit. I, I think what most people that do an outdoor shading type system will look to do is keep them down. Um, there's also a feeling of uh, security that you get out of that as well. Just having them down, knowing that squirrels and rodents and stuff like that aren't going to come through as well. Along with spiders and bugs, it seems to keep a lot of that out. But I think all the above just kind of really closes in the space uh, and gives you a lot of benefit for sure. Very cool. So, Florence, uh, we had we had some of the indoor screens. I would just, uh, Florence, I'm not sure if you can hear me, but I was just suggesting maybe pop open the SI um, website on the outdoor. I dropped the link into chat. Um, if you're able to do that, go for it. In the meantime, Ryan, I'll just kind of set you up here a little bit, kind of tying things together with the project. We've got about maybe five minutes left here. Mm -hmm. um, tying back to the project that Alan did and looking at the cabanas and then going from the drapes to the shade. Um, talk a little bit about, I'm sorry, from the drapes to the motorized shade, but then also the potential for doing a screen, which is currently not the plan for this project, but the other side of your product offering are protection screens for both indoor and outdoor. Um, and if you would just point here for Florence as to which part of this site to go to, and then just talk a little bit about the outdoor, uh, outdoor option there. 
Yeah, if you want to uh, just go to the projection screen side of the website, just hit back real quick and then go to projection screens and then go to Solo Pro. Hit back. Ah, sorry, Florence, just go to screeninnovations.com. Yeah, just click on the logo. Um, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, so um, there we go. very similar to what Alan's doing, um, we, we, we do a lot of outdoor uh, projection screens. And uh, if you go to solo, um, just go to at the very top, go to motorized screens and then solo. Solo Pro, actually. And uh, we're finding, uh, in fact, if you hover over the Airstream, I think it might be a video, but we're finding it will actually hover over the image uh, over looking over downtown real quick. There you go. So in that image, you can see the solo is there. This is a buddy of mine who's got a condo downtown. And I'd say the biggest trend that we're focused on is actually giving someone a unbelievable flat panel like experience and then click on the image just to the left of it. It's the exact same image without the solo. That is the exact same uh, view with the solo put away. And so both for indoor and outdoor, what we're seeing is that people want something there when they want it and they want it to go away when they don't. And uh, we, we believe in that very strongly. And uh, we, we love the fact that we can find new ways of hiding things and making things blend into architecture. Um, when we look at a projection screen, uh, indoor or outdoor, or we look at a roller shade, indoor or outdoor, we believe that the product should do two things. Number one, it should disappear into the environment. It should be a natural extension of the environment. You shouldn't notice that, that it's there at all. Uh, or number two, it should make a statement. Um, if someone's trying to do something uh, radical like a custom color or a sports theme or something of that nature. So as we look to the future, we look at taking a lot of our aesthetically appealing indoor type technologies and expanding those into the outdoor environment and allowing people to have that transformative experience where it can completely disappear. Um, and basically they don't notice it at all. So uh, currently shades uh, for outdoor are pretty ugly. We wanna make them beautiful. Currently shades for outdoor give you five different colors. Uh, we wanna make them completely paintable to match the house to where you would never even know they were there or flush mountable. So I think that's really the trend uh, that we want to we want to convey. Um, we also like giving flexibility. So you look look Alan's customer. He's got uh, five outdoor environments or more, you know, and so we need the ability to be small and nimble and be able to mount into all different types of environments, different ways. Um, luckily, projections lending itself to that better these days as well, where you could do a projector and a cabinet ultra short throw or you could mount it all the way across the yard and do an outdoor uh, screen behind a pool. So there's a lot of flexibility coming down uh, on those lines. Excellent. Yeah, I, I just love the way the products Amazing. disappear into the environment. You know, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Amazing, thank, thank you guys. That, that was really enlightening. I, I think from a price point, from kind of really helping people think about looking at outdoor, um, much more inclusively in terms of what we're doing indoors is, is going to be so important and being able to facilitate that in a way that that isn't locking you in place uh, with with the automated shading, I think is really kind of one of the ways to go. I'm kind of looking at my own backyard right now and I'm going, I see now it doesn't have to be glass. <laughs> Love it. I really, really do. And, you know, we need it. Uh, we, we've got to be in a position where we... Uh, can continue our lives. Hopefully we'll get through this mess that we're in right now in the next few months. But that isn't to say that some of this uh, innovation isn't here to stay. And it's it's been around for some time, of course, but it's really now coming uh, coming into play in its own way. And, and why not do that anyway? I know, Ryan, at one point you were saying, you know, it has always been a problem to have dirt and bugs and, and that lack of flexibility to counter those pro uh, problems. And then you have these beautiful outdoor settings and you don't use them as much as you would, regardless of whether there's a COVID out there or not. And uh, so now we've just kind of forced the issue probably a little bit more. 
Um, so uh, I'm, I'm all about it. I really would like to continue the conversation with you guys, as uh, especially as Alan's project wraps up and to kind of see what all you've been working on. Uh, what you're hearing in the background right now is my great Dane digging a hole in his dog bed, really. Um, uh, but meanwhile, let's keep the conversation going. Uh, on the screen, you see everybody's social media handles. Follow those folks and join us at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash KBI group and look for Design Uncut. All of our programming is there and the group is accessible to anybody that's a professional in kitchen, bath, interior design or smart home technology. So we look forward to keeping it going and see you guys there. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Thanks. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Bye, everyone.